Greater Jakarta. Harboring more than 33 million inhabitants. On which, more than 10 million, are living within Jakarta city proper. It is estimated, that over 6 million residents surrounding Greater Jakarta, commutes to and from, the city center each working day. Resulting to serious traffic congestion, within and surrounding the metropolitan area. Transport issues have increasingly begun to attract political attention, and it has been foreseen that without a major transportation breakthrough, in few years the city will have complete traffic gridlock. To answer the increasing needs of an efficient public transport system, and to fasten commuters' mobility, Indonesian government enhance its public transport system in railroad network, in addition to KRL commuter line operating since 1925. In 2017, Sokarno Hatta Airport Skytrain was built to serve Indonesia's main gateway airport. From its airport's integrated building to the airport's three terminals building. On December of the same year, Sokarno Hatta Airport Rail Link was opened to link the cities of Jakarta and Banten to Indonesian main airport. While its Mass Rapid Transit or MRT system, was introduced in Jakarta in 2019. Its first Mass Rapid Transit, the Jakarta MRT was opened in March 2019. And running through its 13 stations, with a combined route length of almost 16 kilometers. Which only one line is operational. While others, like, North to South Line Phase 2A is currently under construction, and four other lines will be added in the future. Jakarta's first light rail transit, or LRT line was opened in December 2019. The first 5.8-kilometer line, runs through its six stations from Pagangsa and Dua, to Velodrome. Four new additional lines, will be built in the future. While Jakarta's biggest light rail transit project, is the Greater Jakarta LRT, or commonly known as Jabodvik LRT. Connecting, Jakarta city center, with Bogor, Depuk, and Bekasi, within the Greater Jakarta area. The whole LRT system, will consist of four phases. With total investment cost, is estimated to reach 23.8 trillion rupiah or 1.8 billion US dollars. Phase 1A, from Seva Bur, via Kawang, to Duka Adas. Phase 1B, is from Kawang, to Bekasi Timur. Phase 2, from Seva Bur, going down to Bogor Baranong Sayong. Phase 3, from Duka Adas, to Sanayan. Phase 4, from Palmera to Grogal, with extension to Sokarno Hatta Airport. This under construction system, will add Jakarta's rail network by 43.3 kilometers that runs through its 18 stations, costing 11.9 trillion rupiah or approximately 903.6 million US dollar. The construction of the Jabodvik LRT Phase 1, will consists of two lines, Phase 1A and B, with three routes in total. The construction had reached 88.1% overall progress rate as of November 2021. Construction starts as early as 2015, and was initially targeted to open in 2018. However, due to several issue encounters such as land acquisition, financial and project engineering and design, and even due to a limited working hours per day, the project is further moving its date of completion. After seven years of constructions, it is expected to be commercially operational by August 2022, coinciding with the 77th Indonesian Independence Day. The system will utilize level 3 automated controls, which effectively means the train is designed to operate without a train driver. However, to make sure the system will entirely works as intended, each LRT train will have a human attendant and one security personnel. In situations where there might be technical disturbance, train attendants are tasked to operate the train manually under limited speed. So far, this rail system applied the highest technology of all Indonesia's rail network. The driverless rail system, will heavily depends on artificial intelligence, from train operations, communications, signaling, safety measure and other technical parameters. The driverless train system was developed by Indonesian government-owned manufacturer PT Inca, the system was built with the used of sandwich panels, which was integrated on its innovative raw materials, which believed to be environmentally friendly. This new and innovative rail technology, will address issue concerning climate change. Under normal conditions, one LRT series can carry 740 passengers, while in congested conditions it can accommodate 1,308 passengers per trip. 
The plan is that the Jabodvik LRT will operate 560 trips per day on weekdays with headway an average of 3 to 6 minutes. The system can handle over half million per day. The line technical parameter will use standard gauge track of 1,435 mm and to be electrified using 750 volt DC. The northern section of the LRT project partly replaces the Jakarta monorail project which has been cancelled. The monorail project in Jakarta was planned since the early 2000s. Construction commenced in 2004 but immediately stalled due to insufficient funding. In 2005 the initial pylons were constructed. However, the project was abandoned altogether in 2008, leaving the unfinished pylons blocking the main roads. In 2013, it was revived and relaunched, but due to disagreements between developers and land acquisition concerns, in 2015 the monorail project was disbanded altogether and shifted to LRT system. The shift of choice from monorail to a traditional rapid transit system, was based on several considerations. Compared to monorail, LRT has higher passenger capacity, simpler intersection and switching system, and cheaper maintenance cost. Another setback encounter by the projects was the collision during test run last October. The collision occurred between Harjamukti Station and Saraka Station. Luckily, the train was without passengers, so there were no casualties. However, the PT Inca driver suffered minor injuries. The accident involved two train set of LRT number 20 and number 29. Train set 29 who were about to change lanes, were thought to be too fast and collides to train set 20 that was parked, at that time. The accident sparked public concern about the safety parameter of the system. Last November, the Supreme Audit Agency or BPK found a number of non-compliance with the specifications for the Jabodvik light rail transit for its LRT components. There are components that are not in accordance with those required by the Minister of Transportation Decree No. 765 of 2017. Based on the decree of the Minister of Transportation, Inca should install a train hooking device with a system automatic tight coupler which can be controlled from the cab automatically. However, the BPK findings indicate that the hooks installed is an automatic tight lock coupler AAR10 standard, which device system is still manual. Nevertheless, this new rail system will enhance Greater Jakarta connectivity, and partly tackled high traffic congestion of the country's metropolis.